Akino stands resolutely between her son and the menacing red-haired monster, her palms charged with energy, ready to confront the imminent threat head-on. Her gaze remains unwavering, determined to protect her son and neutralize the sinister entity. The red-haired monster, its piercing blue eyes ablaze with malevolence, charges toward Akino with unrelenting ferocity. In a swift motion, it leaps into the air, aiming to strike down upon her from above. Akino, her senses keenly attuned to the impending assault, skillfully evades the devastating strike while simultaneously safeguarding her son. Slightly impressed, the monster observes Akino's swift evasion with a hint of acknowledgement. Akino gently lays you on the ground and begins channeling her energy once more, her fury intensifying at the thought of what the monster had subjected her son to. The red-haired demon charges straight at Akino, closing the distance rapidly while she remains with her back turned, focusing her energy. With a swift and graceful motion, Akino pivots around to face the oncoming attack. Her leg rises in a fluid, powerful motion, her anger channeled into her every movement. Her kick lands with incredible force, striking the demon right in the gut. The impact is so powerful that the demon spits blood and is sent hurtling through the air. The demon comes to a sudden, bone-crushing halt, its body smashed against the unforgiving confines of the tunnel. The red-haired demon now comes to the realization that Akino is actually a crimson shinobi. Akino's relentless attack doesn't stop there. She reaches out her hand, getting a firm grip on the demon's head. As the demon dangles helplessly in the air, it pleads with Akino to spare its life. At the final moment, Akino apologizes to the human who was possessed, expressing her regret for not being able to save her. With her hand charged with mana, Akino channels her energy, causing blue, fire-like embers to surge out of the demon's head. Yu, barely regaining consciousness, catches a fleeting glimpse of what's happening around him. Akino releases her grip, letting the lifeless corpse fall to the ground, devoid of life, the threat now completely extinguished. Akino gazes at the lifeless corpse, a solemn reminder of the danger her son had faced. The lifeless blue eyes, robbed of their malevolent spark, speak of the darkness that had consumed the unfortunate soul within. With her son resting on her back, Akino makes a swift exit from the eerie tunnel, determined to reveal the hidden truths to you. The darkness left behind in the tunnel seems to whisper its secrets, but Akino is resolute in her decision to bring her son into the light. Later that day, in the ominous darkness of the tunnel, a sinister laughter echoes as if resonating from the depths of despair. Suddenly, a swirling vortex of shadow materializes, and from within emerges the sixth hell demon, a malevolent entity with an aura of maleficence that chills the very air around it. The sixth hell demon surveys the scene within the tunnel and notices that both the second and third hell demons lie lifeless, even after bestowing consciousness upon the third demon. It grimly contemplates the unfolding events. The sixth hell demon's malevolent eyes fixate on the phone, its surface stained with human blood. With a morbid curiosity, it decides to taste the blood, only to recoil in disgust as it realizes it's the blood of a juvenile, filling it with a sense of repulsion. As the demon's grotesque fingers made contact with the screen of the smartphone, a sudden, mesmerizing glow enveloped the device. The demon's sinister eyes widened with recognition and malevolent curiosity. It peered at the images on the smartphone screen, recognizing Akino and the boy who bore a striking resemblance to someone it had encountered long ago, the boy's father. The malevolent sixth hell demon's satisfaction deepened. The fact that both Akino and her son had survived their previous encounter with him meant that they were still within his grasp. Their existence was an opportunity to attain the coveted power of the first flame, a chance he wouldn't squander easily. Back at home, where it was night already, Yu's eyes fluttered open, disoriented and uncertain of his surroundings. Then, as if struck by a nightmarish vision, he jolted upright, screaming as if the horrors of his recent experiences still haunted his waking moments. The pain from his back wounds surged back with a vengeance. Each ache served as a cruel reminder of the horrifying encounter he had just survived. Without a moment's respite, his mother, Akino, tossed a bag in his direction, her voice urgent as she instructed him to pack his belongings. Her face determined and grave as they were in a dire situation. Despite his anxiety, you couldn't contain his burning curiosity about what had transpired in the tunnel. He demanded an explanation from Akino, but she continued her frantic search in the cupboards, seemingly ignoring his plea. Finally, she pulled out a small box and opened it to reveal four gleaming kanais. Yu, his body still aching, rose to his feet. 
His hands instinctively went to his ribs, feeling the pain radiating from there. Ignoring the discomfort, he insisted on knowing what had transpired in the tunnel, his curiosity overpowering his pain. However, with unwavering seriousness in her eyes, Akino swiftly hurls two kunais in her son's direction. They was dangerously close to Yu's face, narrowly missing him, and find their mark in one of the demon spirits also known as First Demons. Yu, still baffled by the bizarre turn of events, suddenly feels an eerie chill creeping over him. He begins to sense an encroaching possession by the lingering spirit-like demons. In a swift response, Akino flings for more kunais in Yu's direction, urgently instructing him to duck. Yu, responding to his mother's urgency, swiftly ducks and then starts sprinting toward her. The whole situation is deeply perplexing to him, and he's filled with uncertainty. Akino, however, maintains her composure, commanding Yu to remain calm and position himself directly behind her. Akino explains that it is normal that he does not understand as he does not yet possess the ability to see the demons. Yu, still bewildered, gazes blankly at his mother as she prepares to help him see the hidden world. Akino, with determination, channels her mana into her fingers and gently taps you while instructing him to close his eyes. Akino instructs you to let go of the sight that has veiled his vision all his life. She encourages him to concentrate and calm his mind, blocking out the clamor surrounding him and stilling the rapid rhythm of his heart. As Yu opens his eyes, he emit a brilliant glow. With his newfound vision, the first thing he lays eyes on are demons, not exactly what he was expecting. Yu cries out loud, his eyes locked onto the approaching demons, and he desperately asks his mom what these strange creatures are. Akino's sword materializes with a brilliant, ethereal glow, illuminating the dimly lit surroundings. With a graceful leap into the air, she becomes a swirling tempest of steel, her blade slicing through the horde of demons with a mesmerizing display of lethal precision. The air crackles with energy as each strike cleaves through the darkness, sending demonic forms dissolving into ash and smoke. Yu stands there, eyes wide in disbelief, his mouth hanging open at the spectacular scene unfolding before him. The first hell demons, their sinister countenances twisted into nightmarish forms, writhe in agony as Akino's powerful strike rends them asunder. Their grotesque figures disintegrate into a macabre display of darkness, dissolving into the void and leaving behind a chilling and unsettling atmosphere that lingers in the dimly lit hallway. Akino wields the sword gracefully, and Yu is mesmerized by his mother's skills, which he's never seen before. However, Aniko exclaims that she has yet so much to tell you about his mysterious past. Yu, clearly dumbfounded by everything, demands to know what those beings were and why she's wielding a glowing sword that looks like it came straight out of a manga. He also can't help but wonder why Aniko seems so calm in this dire situation when they're under attack by these unknown entities. Akino proceeds to explain that those beings are first hell demons, also known as others in her world. She clarifies that these demons have the ability to possess individuals who are in a heightened state of sadness, fear, anger, or near death. Meanwhile, as Aniko was explaining the nature of the demons to her son, this time, rather than confronting Akino directly, which had proven futile, they opted to target the residents living around the complex. One of the demons infiltrates the human host, taking possession of their soul. As this happens, the person's eyes undergo a dramatic transformation, shifting from their natural color to an eerie, glowing blue. The possessed human now carries the malevolent presence of the first hell demon within them. Now, a menacing horde of possessed humans begins to converge upon the location where Akino and you stand. These individuals, their eyes radiating an ominous blue glow, move forward with a relentless determination, their every step resonating with a malevolent purpose. The atmosphere becomes charged with an unsettling energy as the growing multitude of possessed beings advances steadily towards their unsuspecting prey. With their singular focus on reaching Akino, the possessed horde seems to have temporarily forgotten the existence of the building's elevator, opting instead for an absurd, wall-scaling approach. Yu's attention is swiftly drawn to the balcony by a cacophony of shattering glass. There, he witnesses a possessed human violently breaking through the balcony windows. Yu feels a shiver of fear course down his spine as the figures of the possessed humans on the balcony remind him of the harrowing attack he had recently endured in the dark tunnel. Chonky, equally frightened, seeks refuge under the furniture, his adorable face peeking out, tiny paws trembling in fear. Frightened to his core, Yu bolts for the door, 
frantic as he explains to his mom that there are far too many of these creatures to contend with. Despite Akino's urging for him to stay by her side, he dashes outside with Chonky, making a beeline for the stairwell of the building. Yet, as he steps out, his eyes and mouth gape open in sheer shock. There is no escape. Possessed humans are already converging on his position. Their numbers are staggering, as if the entire residence has fallen under the sway of these malevolent entities. Yu begins to tremble uncontrollably as the realization dawns upon him that his escape plan has crumbled before his eyes. Smart Chonky latches onto Yu's clothing and pulls him back, a silent but clear indication that moving forward is not an option. Yu, understanding his loyal companion's intentions, decides to backtrack and head back to his mother. Yu, realizing the futility of his escape, begins to make a desperate run back towards his mother. The possessed beings continue to pursue him relentlessly. Back at the starting point, he apologizes to his mother, admitting that he should have listened to her and not run away. However, he is even more terrorized by the sight of his living room filled with bodies sprawled across the floor. Yu, his voice trembling with fear, asks his mom if she had killed everyone. The atmosphere is tense as Akino declines, assuring him that they are only unconscious. Their short talk is interrupted by a possessed being lunging at you, its fingers nearly grazing him. In that critical moment, Akino swiftly channels her ninja art and sends a sapphire-hued bolt shooting towards the assailant. The bolt strikes the oncoming attacker square in the temple, and with a blinding flash, it pierces through the others in the corridor. Yu, unsure of what just happened, watches in awe and fear as the azure energy whizzes past him, leaving a trail of unconscious possessed beings in its wake. Akino sternly instructs you to heed her words and stay close to her. She reassures him that the people on the floor are merely unconscious, not dead. She emphasizes the importance of staying calm, especially in the face of such dire circumstances. With her sword in hand, Akino begins to inscribe a complex spell onto the floor. Despite having subdued the first wave of possessed beings, more are already closing in on her. As the spell reaches completion, a swirling blue torrent starts to materialize around you. The spell surrounds them in a shimmering blue force field, providing a temporary sanctuary. The attackers, now just inches away from you, desperately try to breach the barrier. Concerned, you questions whether the barrier will hold, but Akino responds that her tenchi is running out. The relentless onslaught continues as the possessed beings relentlessly attack the protective shield. As the barrier begins to crack under the relentless assault, Akino realizes that time is running out. With urgency in her voice, she starts to explain the events of that fateful night 13 years ago when you was born. However, you, still overwhelmed by the chaotic situation, finds it hard to believe that this is the right time for a history lesson, especially while they're under attack. Despite the ongoing chaos, Akino persists in her explanation. She reveals that on the night of Yu's birth, she had to stage their deaths and escape from her home, the Crimson Empire, leaving behind everything they once knew and loved. Out of nowhere, an ethereal beam strikes the residence of Akino and Yu with immense force, causing the walls to crumble around them. The impact sends the possessed beings flying in all directions, effectively ending their threat as they are killed in the process. Despite the powerful beam making direct contact, Akino's force field held its ground, but the tremendous impact had weakened it considerably. As the force field began to waver under the relentless assault, a demon emerged from the chaos and stood menacingly in front of them, bathed in the eerie glow of the full moon. Akino and Yu, upon seeing the formidable demon standing before them, were struck with a mixture of terror and awe. Their eyes widened in disbelief, and beads of sweat formed on their foreheads as they confronted the otherworldly menace. The demon, with an ominous presence, reminds Akino that he has come to take you in order to break an ancient seal. Yu, standing beside his mother, remains utterly perplexed and clueless by the unfolding events. Akino swiftly explains to you that the menacing demon before them is none other than the sixth hell demon, the most powerful among its kind. With a grave tone, she reveals that the demon's true purpose is to annihilate you. The demon, unyielding, assures Akino that this time, nothing will stand in his way. You, trembling with fear and wide-eyed, questions whether they are going to die. Aniko swears on her life that the demon will not get to him, her eyes filled with determination and fierce protectiveness. Akino then channels all her tenchi outwards, creating a bigger and stronger barrier around them, determined to shield you from the impending threat of the sixth hell demon. The demon smirks wickedly, 
his malevolence evident as he begins to channel his attack. From his fingertips, bolts of blue lightning-like energy surge forth and strike the barrier. These bolts crackle with sinister power, creating a dazzling and ominous display of supernatural force against Aquino's protective shield. You, from within the weakening barrier, watches in dread as the relentless assault continues. The once protective shield begins to fracture, its defensive integrity compromised. With mounting apprehension, he witnesses the inevitable outcome. The barrier shatters completely, and the malevolent bolts surge through the breach, closing in on him and Aquino. In a moment of dire need, Aquino employs another secret ninja art. With her hand raised high, thousands of ethereal, razor-sharp blue blades manifest in the air. Swiftly, they intercept the malevolent bolts sent forth by the demon. The demon, though acknowledging Aquino's commendable efforts, senses her waning strength. He knows that she's nearing her limit, and with each passing moment, she grows weaker. One of Aquino's hands glows with a radiant blue light, while the other firmly holds her sword. Yu is mesmerized by the sight of all the shimmering blue swords hovering in front of them. Each blade seems to respond to her will, forming a formidable barrier of weapons under her control. In a sudden rage, Aquino exclaims that each blade will pierce the demon, ensuring he never lays his hands on her son. All the blades, once afloat, suddenly accelerate and hurtle towards the demon with incredible speed and precision, forming a deadly, swirling vortex of blue. The attack results in a massive cloud of destruction forming in the air where the demon once stood. Aquino realizes that while the attack may not have defeated the demon, it has bought her some valuable time. As the cloud dissipates, the demon is nowhere to be seen. Yu, believing that his mom has successfully killed the demon, breathes a sigh of relief. However, that couldn't be farther from the truth as the demon suddenly reappears behind you. Aquino, realizes that the demon has changed positions, and it's too late to send the blades in that direction. It's a race against time as she comprehends the direness of the situation. With her glowing hand raised high, she clenches it into a fist, channeling all her remaining energy. Then, with a resounding boom, she slams it onto the ground with every ounce of her might, creating a shockwave of energy that radiates outward with incredible force. The shockwave hits the demon with tremendous force, sending it hurtling backward through the air. However, to the demon, it feels more like a minor annoyance than a significant threat. Meanwhile, Yu is also caught in the impact of the shockwave, and he is sent tumbling away from the epicenter of the explosion. In that critical moment, Akino points her glowing hand directly at you, and the myriad of blue blades that once surrounded them all accelerate simultaneously toward her son. They form a formidable wall of swords, stacking upon each other like a solid barrier, temporarily slowing down Yu's movements in the process. Yu's astonishment at his mother's incredible powers is short-lived as the demon makes a swift and menacing advance toward him once more. The thousand swords materialized by Akino descend right behind you, forming an impenetrable barrier that stops the demon dead in his tracks. Frustration and irritation grip the demon as he struggles against this relentless onslaught, unable to comprehend why Akino is fighting so fiercely when, in his mind, the outcome seems inevitable. With a resolute cry that conveys her unwavering maternal love, Akino summons every ounce of her strength. She prepares to unleash the full force of the thousand swords upon the demon, a torrent of radiant blue blades ready to rain down upon him. The demon, realizing the impending cataclysm, braces himself for the oncoming assault. The demon frantically dodges the relentless swords, which pursue him with precision, their luminous blue forms refusing to yield. Yet, their pursuit begins to lose its intensity and starts to slow down. The demon is baffled by this display of power from Akino, struggling to comprehend how she can muster such incredible strength even when she can barely remain upright. Akino, her form barely holding together, leans heavily on her glowing sword for support. With sheer determination etched onto her face, she continues to summon every ounce of her dwindling strength in an attempt to vanquish the relentless demon. The demon, with claw-like hands skidding against the ground, abruptly changes direction to face Akino head-on. His foot finds the edge of a stone, providing the leverage needed to propel himself towards her. In a swift and terrifying motion, the demon hurtles through the air, closing the distance to Akino with frightening speed. His malevolent intent is palpable as he bears down on her, ready to strike with deadly force. Akino, her eyes locked onto the oncoming demon, prepares herself for a head-on confrontation. With determination in her heart, she swings her sword in a powerful arc, 
intending to strike down the demon. However, to her shock and dismay, the demon effortlessly intercepts the blade with his bare hands, his strength overwhelming her efforts. Amidst the battle, the demon smirks at Akino questioning if that is all it takes for death. In a flash, he puts his hands through a portal and Akino is dealt with a fatal blow, blood coursing out of her body and mouth. Tears streamed uncontrollably down Yu's face as he stood frozen, bearing witness to the horrifying scene unfolding before his eyes. The sight of the demon's grotesque hand impaling his mother's heart felt like a dagger thrust into his own chest. The demon, his face twisted into a malevolent grin, exuded an aura of pure evil that seemed to suffocate the very air around him. Akino's eyes widened in sheer disbelief. She stood frozen, unable to comprehend the horrifying sight before her. A hand, grotesque and twisted, had pierced through her body, emerging from her chest in a grotesque display of violence. Shock coursed through her veins, rendering her speechless. The demon, devoid of mercy, withdrew his hand from Akino's chest, leaving behind a gaping wound that oozed crimson life. The sight was nightmarish, as her blood dripped from his fingers. Yet, the brutality didn't end there. He grabbed Akino by the neck. Tears streamed down Yu's face as he found his voice and screamed at the demon. His words were filled with a mixture of fear, anger, and desperation as he demanded that the creature release his mother from its grasp. The demon cruelly lifted Akino off the ground, his grip on her tightening as he berated her. He taunted her, mocking her efforts and making it clear that, in his eyes, everything she had done had been futile. Summoning every ounce of courage within him, you hurled a stone at the demon, swearing to avenge his mother. With all the strength he could muster, he hurled it toward the demon, his shout filled with rage and desperation. But the demon, with a casual flick of his otherworldly hand, effortlessly deflected the projectile as if it were nothing more than a speck of dust. The sheer ease with which the demon dismissed his attack left you in stunned silence, his wide eyes locked onto the malevolent figure before him. The demon imparted a bitter truth to you, emphasizing the stark hierarchy of power that governed their world. In this grim reality, the feeble were incapable of exerting influence over those who reigned supreme, let alone posing a threat to them. The robust alone held sway over the wheel of destiny, orchestrating the course of life, while the feeble were condemned to watch impotently, their destinies fixed and unalterable just like his mother. In a sudden twist of events, the demon conjured yet another rift in reality, creating a portal that seemed to lead to an unknown and perilous destination. Akino, ever vigilant, recognized the impending danger and urgently commanded you to flee. However, you found himself frozen in terror as the portal materialized right before his eyes. Despite the looming threat, you steadfastly refused to abandon his mother's side. His determination was unwavering, even in the face of danger. Anger welled up in Akino as she pressed the urgency of the situation, her voice laced with authority as she insisted that he follow her command and escape. Akino, aware of her son's stubbornness, summoned every ounce of her remaining strength. She directed the ethereal blades she'd conjured earlier towards you just as the demon's hand emerged from the portal, reaching for her son. The blades, glowing with a brilliant azure light, streaked toward Yu's clothing, strapping him onto them, moving him away from the portal. The demon, his face etched with irritation, quickly comprehended Akino's desperate maneuver. Akino however, shouted fervently, attempting to persuade you that his presence was only hindering their chances of survival, emphasizing that he needed to escape for both their sakes. Despite the blades rescuing him from the demon's clutches, you adamantly refuted every word that Akino uttered. He staunchly declared his determination to remain by her side, unwavering in his decision. The demon gets ready to summon another portal at the location where Yu is moving to. Akino seized the opportunity and clamped onto the demon's arm. Her hand ignited with power as she channeled her secret ninja art, causing the demon to display clear signs of irritation. He was visibly vexed by the revelation of yet another trick up Akino's sleeve. With her legs locked securely around the demon, Akino pushed herself beyond her limits. She channeled her tenchi into her palms, setting them ablaze with fierce blue flames. The demon, trapped and cornered, could only seethe with anger and frustration as he struggled against Akino's unyielding hold. Akino continued her relentless assault, determined to keep the demon from approaching her son. She materialized swords right above them, and at her command, they came down with astonishing speed, piercing the demon's arm. The pain was etched across his face, a mix of fury and agony as he struggled to break free from Akino's grasp and the piercing swords. On the other hand, 
where Akino's blades were stuck onto Yu's clothes, started disappearing one by one. This sudden disappearance sent Yu hurtling through the air, his body doing a few somersaults before finally crashing into a nearby tree. But it didn't end there. He plowed through the branches, each one causing more pain, before landing heavily on the ground below. Tears streamed down Yu's face, his body aching from the fall, but the pain was nothing compared to the emotional turmoil within him. He couldn't understand why his mother had sent him away from her. With a determined yet frightened resolve, he pushed himself up onto his feet, ignoring the discomfort. He couldn't bear to be alone, and his voice trembled as he declared that he would follow his mother everywhere, even if it meant facing death itself. She was all he had, and he couldn't bear to lose her. Back in the midst of the fierce battle, Akino persisted, channeling every ounce of her remaining Tenchi into her attacks, determined to keep the demon on the spot as long as possible. The demon's face contorted with visible anger, his frustration growing as her relentless assault continued. Suddenly, a set of crimson symbols began to glow fiercely from the ground next to the demon. His eyes widened in sheer terror, his face twisted with a mixture of horror and recognition as he realized the significance of the symbols. They were the unmistakable signs of a death pact, a powerful and binding contract that even demons feared. The demon's eyes, reflecting the red glow of the symbols, flickered with a growing realization. He strained to remember when and how these cryptic scriptures had been etched. As his thoughts raced, he suddenly recalled that while it had seemed like the blades were merely attacking him, they had, in fact, been meticulously carving these symbols all along. The demon, his face a twisted canvas of fear and frustration, couldn't fathom why Akino was willingly throwing herself into a futile attack even though her actions wouldn't completely obliterate him. Akino, her determination in every word, simply replied that it was to buy her son some time. The realization that he might not be able to escape Akino's desperate gambit struck terror into his heart. His eyes, wide and wild, betrayed his inner turmoil as he grappled with the gravity of the situation. Akino's resolve remained unshaken, her determination gleaming brightly in her eyes. She understood that there were no other viable options, and with unwavering commitment, she forged ahead with her decision, fully prepared to see it through to the very end, whatever the cost may be. As Yu hurried back towards his mother, his eyes were met with the ominous sight of a pulsating, blood-red glow emanating from the ground nearby. Tears flowed unrestrained down Akino's cheeks, their silvery trails glistening in the eerie, crimson light of their dire battle. She whispered her fervent hope that the time she had fought so fiercely to buy for her son would be enough, that he would find his way and survive the unforgiving world without her. With a heavy heart, Akino confessed how she had kept him sheltered from life's cruel realities for far too long, protecting him from the darkness that lurked beyond their embrace. But now, in this dire moment, she knew she had to release him, to let him forge his own path and face the challenges that lay ahead. Akino's lips formed her last words of gratitude. She was profoundly thankful, beyond words or expression, for the thirteen precious years of her son's existence. Those years had filled the void in her heart, a deep well of longing and loneliness that she had long believed was insurmountable. As a colossal explosion, bathed in ominous red light, erupted in the heart of the city, Yu's world crumbled before his eyes. Tears welled up as he stood frozen, his gaze locked onto the cataclysmic spectacle. The world he had known was disintegrating before him, leaving him feeling utterly helpless and lost in the chaos. Well that is all for this chapter. Like, share and subscribe to be notified when the next chapter is out.